Welcome to the channel. Before starting the video, sign up and leave your like so we can hit the goal of 600 subscribers. Saudi Arabia, Cristiano Ronaldo, Bernardo Silva, Ruben Neves and Karim Mitoma are part of the biggest change in football in 30 years. The biggest story to come out of this summer's transfer window was the emergence of a nation's quest to become a football superpower. The Saudi Professional League, SPL, gained the world's attention for the first time after Cristiano Ronaldo moved to the Middle East at the turn of the year. The Portugal captain joined Al Nasser, one of the country's big four alongside rivals Al Hilal and Jeddah giants Al Ittihad and Al Ali. These teams were all bought by the country's public investment fund, PIF, the same organization that bought Newcastle United for £300 million in September 2021 giving them the unlimited supply of money to attract some of the biggest names in world football. Ballon d'Or winner Karim Benzema, Chelsea midfielder N'Golo Kanti and Celtic playmaker Hoda have joined champions Itihad to work with former Tottenham manager Nuno Espirito Santo. On the other hand, Khalid Koulibaly, Ruben Neves and Serge Milinkovic Savic signed for Hillel, 18 times champions. Al Ali have also been busy this window buying Premier League stars Roberto Firmino and Eduard Mendy, with three-time champions Riyad Mahrez set to join them soon. The signings of older statesmen such as Benzema and Kanti have not caused much alarm in European football, but the signings of players in their prime such as Ruben Neves, as well as attempts to attract some of the Premier League's current best players, including the likes of Bernardo Silva, Sun Hyung Min and Karim Mitoma caused football superpowers to start to sit up and realize what could be a seismic shift in the game. The Saudis' aim is to make their league one of the top 10 in the world in terms of revenue. Clubs are not subject to financial regulations, such as financial fair play, which allow them to offer mouth-watering sums to players, deals that their European counterparts simply cannot match. Clubs therefore see that attracting these superstars will offer greater commercial opportunities, offering more lucrative TV deals and advanced merchandising and ticket sales. The seedlings of this plan are already beginning to be visible. Al Nasser recently signed a shirt deal with Nike, with the club seeing a 100% increase in the number of shirts sold since Ronaldo joined. The club will wear these shirts in friendlies against European powerhouses Benfica, PSG and Inter Milan later this month. It is unlikely that the wealth that fuels this dream will run out anytime soon. PIF is estimated to be the world's largest sovereign wealth fund, having bought golf's new PGLIV for £3 billion, alongside Newcastle for £300 million and reported attempts to snap up F1 for a further £20 billion. So where are the problems? First, many feel that these attempts by the Saudi authorities to make the country a major sports player are an attempt to clean up its global image, also known as sports whitewashing. LGBTQ plus rights are not recognized in the country, while the fate of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who was kidnapped and murdered in Istanbul, created a representation of a country lacking in freedom, inclusion, or progressive politics. On the football side, the standard of play still doesn't come close to that of the European leagues. Many of the teams would struggle to compete in the top half of League 2 and it will be several years before they are even remotely close to offering a standard of top-flight football similar to that of Turkey or the Netherlands. All SPL teams are restricted to eight foreign players separate from their 25-man squads, limiting the amount of star involvement that can help impact the quality of football. Al Nasser have already filled their quota with the latest signing of former Manchester United left-back Alex Tells. Whether this is good or bad for football will be debated at length over the coming months and years, but what we do know is that this revolution must stay, unlike failed attempts in the past by China, Japan, Russia and many others in the East. Why is this? Because Saudi Arabia is a football-crazy country. Major cup games in Riyadh attract 60,000 fans and the country has always been a regional and continental powerhouse, with the national team appearing in six World Cups, as well as winning three Asian Cups. There is an established football culture that the higher powers feel they can profit from. Love it or hate it, the Saudi Pro League is on the rise and there's very little anyone can do to stop it. Hope you enjoyed the video. And the What did you think of the video? Subscribe to the channel and leave your opinion in the comments.